So a viewer asked me this question the other day and I'm super excited to answer it because I don't get it very often. She writes, great info, easy to follow. Hey, thank you for watching, I appreciate that. So she continues, do you know the benefit of purchasing a router or just leasing one through Comcast? That is an excellent question. In this video, I'm gonna try to break it down for you and give you both sides of the coin so you can make an educated decision. So first of all, this is nothing against Comcast. I'm just going to use the term internet or cable providers to refer to the larger companies that usually provide you both internet and cable services all in one. Most of the bigger carriers operate the same way. So many people don't even realize that they have a choice when they sign up for cable internet services. Most of the time, the person on the phone tells you that they're gonna provide the services for you, including the equipment, and they either glance over or don't tell you all the minor details, but what happens is, is usually you get this device from your carrier, and then when you get your first month's bill, you see a six to $10 monthly lease charge on it, and that is for the actual internet modem and combination wireless router. Now, you're usually gonna pay anywhere from six to $10 a month for this device, and that's a lease agreement between you and the cable company, stating that they're going to provide the equipment for you and including all the support and maintenance and replacement if necessary for this small monthly fee. In exchange for that fee, they're gonna provide you internet service to that modem as well as replace it if necessary. But the real question is, do you really even need it? Let's just say for some reason your wireless is not working correctly. The wired part which connects your TV or your computer sitting next to your desk seems to work fine, but nothing on your wireless network seems to work fine for any length of time. It's not uncommon with these cheaply made boxes that these cable providers do give you and then subsequently charge you keep that the wireless side of those devices generally is the first part that goes bad. Usually the internet side works fine but the wireless is what I like to call wonky. So on the one hand it is certainly convenient for you. You pay a small monthly fee and you never have to worry about going out and buying equipment. And for some people their equipment works for years with no problems. And if you're one of those people, consider yourself very lucky. But what actually happens if you have to be inconvenienced with a wireless problem on one of these devices? Well, a lot of that depends on your personal situation. So for example, if you're a stay-at-home mom and you have a cell phone with internet on it and you don't absolutely need home internet or home Wi-Fi and you can afford to be there when a technician shows up and you have the time to pick up the phone and call and troubleshoot over the phone, it actually would probably benefit you to just lease that device because it's really not inconveniencing you a whole lot. But what if you're someone who has to get up in the morning and physically go to a job? Maybe you're single and you, there's nobody home to answer the door when the technician shows up. This is where it gets a little more inconvenient. So what's going to happen is, is first you're gonna to have to pick up the phone, you're gonna to have to call the cable company and tell them that you have a problem. Secondly, they're gonna tell you that there really isn't a problem, that they can talk to the device and everything's working fine. They're gonna have you restart the device and probably call back if you have a problem. And then, of course, if you have a problem, you're going to have to call back and then you're gonna to have to talk to another person and tell them that the last person you talked to you said to just turn off the device and turn it back on and you're still having a problem. So at that point they're going to do additional troubleshooting and then they're going to eventually say yes it looks like there might be a problem. Then most likely they're going to have you do what's called a reset which is basically put the modem back to factory settings just like it came originally and then if you still have a problem then they might send you a device. But once you get to that point you've already spent quite a bit of time on the phone with troubleshooting and then if they do determine that the problem is the device itself they will gladly send you another one since you're leasing it and it is included in that monthly fee that you pay. Now they're going to send you out a product probably going to take anywhere from three to five business days to get it. So you're going to have to know when the device is coming to your door. And then they're going to most likely send a technician out there to install it and set it up for you. So it's going to require that you be home when the device and the technician are both there so the technician can come in there and do all that. Well, that's great, but what if you have a regular job? Well, now you're going to have to take time off of work, so you're gonna to have to make sure that you're home in time to be there when the technician gets there, and sometimes they give you anywhere from a four to six to eight hour window, which means if they say anywhere between, say, two and 6 p.m., you're going to have to leave work early to go home to be there when the technician gets there, or they will reschedule you for another day, in which case you've lost half a day of work. That's an inconvenience on top of having to call and do all this other stuff just to get to this point. So now, let's just say you took time off for work and the technician actually shows up. So they're gonna come in, they're gonna do their thing, they're gonna troubleshoot it, determine it's a problem, they're gonna pull it, put another one in place, determine the internet comes in, and then they're gonna generally walk out the door. 
if you're lucky and you know the right question to ask, you might be able to sweet talk them into setting up your wireless the same settings as you had before. The default username and password on these modems is generally not what you are using. None of your devices are going to work because you're on this different username and password. So if they change it, consider yourself lucky. Most of the time, they're going to walk out the door as soon as they determine that you have internet and that's all their job is. Sometimes some services actually charge you a fee to reconfigure your wireless internet for you. It's not included in the replacement of the modem. Their job is just to make sure you have internet. What you do with that internet is still on you. That is a big pain to deal with for that six to seven dollar a month convenience fee. And all of this service is included in that monthly fee that you pay. Now, an alternate option, and one that I really recommend to my customers when they ask me this question, is to just simply purchase a separate wireless router. And the reason for this is because most of the time the cable modems that are provided, the modem part itself that actually receives internet usually works fine, usually doesn't fail. The wireless part is usually what I've seen is where the problems start. Now, sometimes those are user caused and and sometimes it's just legitimately doesn't work. But either way, it's the, usually the wireless part that is the problem. A decent router is usually gonna run you anywhere between 50 and $80. Now, if you weigh that cost versus six to ten dollars a month to lease it, see, the upside here is that you pay for it one time, and since it's a quality product that you're buying from a store, it's probably going to last you years and years and years versus the product that they give you, which may not last a year. Now, what will happen is, is going this route, you reduce the cost that you're paying every month to your provider because you don't have to pay that six to ten dollars a month to lease the product now because you've bought your own. They have to provide you an internet modem. That's how the service comes into your house. So what they will do is they will send you just a modem. That's all that device does. And instead of having one device that does two things, you'll now have one device provided by your carrier. And then you go and purchase the router that connects to that device. And now you have incoming internet to their device, which is free, included in your service. And then you have a quality wireless router that you have bought that when these two work together, you have wireless internet and generally you have no more problems. And on top of that, you're not spending six to ten dollars a month to your cable company, which we all know we pay the cable company way too much anyway. So doing this is going to guarantee that you're going to have a better product over the long haul. You're never going to have to deal with calling customer service because your wireless is out. All that troubleshooting mess, you don't have to do any of that now. And look at it this way. In less than a year, the new router has paid for itself and you've got a better product and you don't have to pay the cable company anything else. So as you can see, the option to go with a separate router works good for some people, especially if you're one of those people that doesn't like calling the cable company or you don't have the time or the patience to deal with calling them and going through 30, 45 minutes of troubleshooting, going with the separate router seems to make more sense. It will certainly save you time off of work and the headache and inconvenience of having to deal with calling customer service. Most of the time, a problem with the wireless router is solved by simply unplugging and replugging it back in and you're back in business. That's pretty common, but if all you have to do is restart it and you're back in business, who cares? Now, for others, the simplicity of letting your provider handle everything for you for a small fee every month may make more sense, especially if you you are not dependent on internet that might make more sense to you just to let somebody else deal with it but you will still have to call them every time you have a problem and that could be a big issue over the long haul for a lot of people ten dollars a month to not have to mess with it is money well spent if that situation works well for you then i would recommend doing that just be aware that you are going to have problems all the big carriers all have problems with these modems sometimes it'll last you a year sometimes it lasts you three years sometimes it lasts you three months just be aware that you are not obligated to buy that all-in-one device from your cable company or your internet provider whether you stay with that company or not that wireless router can go with you so for the young lady that asked that question i certainly hope this helped you and i certainly hope it helped you figure out what works best for you as always thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video